Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 22. In this video we're going to learn about solving systems of linear equations by substitution. So in the last lesson we talked about how we could solve a linear system in two variables using graphing. And what we found was at the point of intersection we had an ordered pair that was on both lines. So therefore it was a solution to both equations of the system and it was a solution for our system. But there's some big problems with graphing. Graphing is extremely inefficient and it's extremely hard to find a solution for. We have large numbers, small numbers, and non-integer values. So in other words, if the solution was something like negative three fourths comma one seventh, something like that. It's very hard to graph that. I know you can use a graphing calculator or a computer program, but if you're using a sheet of paper, like most of you are gonna do on a test, it's not very efficient or very effective at all. So kind of the next thing we do is turn to an algebraic method. We got the concept down, we understand about a system of linear equations and what the solution means, but we need another way to kind of attack this type of problem. So with substitution, I'm basically going to substitute in for one of the variables and create a linear equation in one variable. So let me kind of go deeper into that. Let's say I have this problem, 6x plus 7y equals negative 9, and negative x plus y equals negative 5. What I can do is I can solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Now, it doesn't matter which variable you pick, and it doesn't matter which equation you start out with, but it's generally going to be easier if you look for a variable that has a coefficient of 1, that's the easiest, or the second easiest would be negative 1. If I look at this equation here, what I see is that I have a coefficient on the y variable of 1. I have a coefficient on the x variable of negative 1. So I can use either of those. It's going to be quickest for me to use the y variable because the coefficient is 1. So it's very easy to solve that for y. I have negative x plus y equals negative 5. Just add x to both sides of the equation. So that's gone. And I have y is equal to x minus 5. So please understand at this point that these two equations are the exact same. This is the same as this. I just transformed it. It's solved for y. Now what does that mean? y equals x minus 5. I'm saying that y, y is the same as the quantity x minus 5. Those two are the same. So in terms of money, that's a good way to explain it. Let's say that I had a $100 bill. And let's say that I also had five $20 bills. Well, they're the same in terms of value. They just look different, right? So these are the same. They just look different. So because they're the same, I can go into this other equation here and I can plug in for Y. I can plug in for Y. So where I see a Y, I'm going to plug in an X minus five because that's what y is equal to. So I'll have 6x plus 7 times, again, I'm plugging in for y, and I'm plugging in x minus 5, that quantity, so make sure you use parentheses. So the quantity x minus 5, and this equals negative 9. So now I have a linear equation in one variable, and I can solve for x and find out what that value is. So I have 6x plus 7 times x is 7x, and then minus 7 times 5 is 35. Okay, and this is going to equal negative 9. Combine like terms on the left, 6x plus 7x is 13x. So this is 13x minus 35 equals negative 9. Let's add 35 to both sides of the equation. So this is going to be 13x is equal to, what's negative 9 plus 35? Well, that's going to be 26. So I get 13x equals 26, divide both sides of the equation by 13 to get x by itself, and I get that x is equal to 2. So at this point, I have an answer for one of the variables in the system. I know that x equals 2. So how do I get the value for y? Well, all I need to do is plug a 2 in for x in either of the original equations. Let me erase everything. So again, I know that x equals 2. So I could plug that in here or here, because remember, when I look at a system, this value for x has to work as a solution in both equations. 
So that means I can plug it into either one. Doesn't really matter. Looks like it's going to be easier to plug it into the second one. So I'd have negative 2, right? Plug in into 2 for x, plus y equals negative 5. Let's add 2 to both sides of the equation. And I'm going to get y is equal to negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So x equals 2 and y is equal to negative 3. As an ordered pair, this would be 2 comma negative 3. So let's erase this and put 2 comma negative 3. So I'm going to erase everything and we're going to check it. So remember, for this to be a solution for the system, it's got to work as a solution for both equations. It can't just work for one. It's got to work for both. So 6x, we'll put 6 times 2, plug it into 2 for x, plus 7y, plug it into negative 3 for y, equals negative 9. 6 times 2 is 12. And then 7 times negative 3 is negative 21, so minus 21 equals negative 9. And that's true. 12 minus 21 is negative 9. So you get negative 9 equals negative 9. So that works out. All right, let's take a look at the second one. So we'd plug in a 2 for x. I have a negative out in front, and then I'm going to plug a 2 in there. Plus, for y, I'm going to plug in a negative 3. And this should equal negative 5, and of course it does. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. So you get negative 5 equals negative 5. So again, that checks out as well. So your solution for the system here is 2 comma negative 3. So some of you might be doubtful and you might say, well, if I had solved another one of the equations for another variable, let's say like x, I wouldn't have got the same answer. Well, you would have. The reason that I solved this equation for y is because y had a coefficient of 1. When you look at your section in your book on substitution, they're going to teach you to look for variables that have a coefficient of 1 or negative 1 because they're really easy to solve an equation for that. But I'm going to go ahead and solve this first equation for x and restart the problem. So 6x plus 7y equals negative 9. I would subtract 7y away from each side. That would go away. I'd have 6x is equal to negative 7y minus 9. Divide both sides by 6. Again, the coefficient of x. And so I'd have x is equal to negative 7 6 y minus for 9 over 6 they're both divisible by 3 so this would be 3 halves all right so x equals x equals negative 7 6 y minus 3 halves so once i know what x is equal to i can plug in for x in the other equation so i started with this one i'm going to plug into this one so instead of an x there i'm going to have a negative and then I'm going to have negative 7, 6, y minus 3 halves, then plus y equals negative 5. So I have a linear equation of one variable, and that variable is y. So a negative out in front, you can think of that as a negative 1 out in front. Just change the sign of each term inside the parentheses. So instead of negative 7, 6, I'd have 7, 6, then y. Instead of minus 3 halves, I'd have plus 3 halves. And then plus y equals negative 5. If I want, I can multiply both sides of the equation by 6 to clear the denominators. So 6 times 7, 6y would be 7y plus 6 times 3 halves. The 6 would cancel with the 2 and give me a 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 6 times y is 6y. And this equals negative 5 times 6, that's negative 30. All right, so 7y plus 6y is 13y. So I'll have 13y here, then plus 9 equals negative 30. I would subtract 9 away from each side. So that's going to cancel. And I'd have 13y is equal to negative 39. As a final step, I'll divide both sides of the equation by 13. And I'm going to get that y is equal to negative 3. Let me erase everything. So when we come back up here, we see that we originally found that y was negative 3. A little bit less work because we had an easier equation to kind of work with at first, but we found the same answer either way. And then again, you have negative 3, so you go ahead and plug it into either of the original equations, and you will get 2 as a result for x. So let's do that real quick. So 6x plus 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. So plus negative 21 equals negative 9. And we'd add 21 to both sides of the equation. So this would cancel. You'd have 6x is equal to negative 9 plus 21 is going to give me 12. 
divide both sides of the equation by six, and of course you get x equals two, which is exactly what you had right there. So either way you do it, you get the same answer. The solution for your system is two comma negative three. Now I wanna eliminate one source of confusion before we move on to look at another problem. Once we find the value for one of the variables, I told you clearly that you can plug it in for either equation, right, either original equation, and get the result for the other unknown. So in other words, if I figured out that y was negative three, I could plug that in here or here, doesn't matter, and solve for the unknown x. And that would be the x that's the solution to the system. One thing that's a little different, if when I originally take an equation and I solve it for one of the variables, I can't plug it back into that one, right? So if you do that, you're gonna get zero equals zero. And let me show you that real fast before we move on because I think it's important. So let's say I solve this for y. So y equals, again, I'd add x to both sides of the equation, so x minus five. If I plug in, x minus five for y there, I'm just gonna get zero equals zero. So in the first step, you always wanna plug into the other equation. It's once you've figured out what one of the values is gonna be, then you can plug it into either equation. Okay, so I wanna want make sure that you understand that. So let's just plug that in real quick so you can see that. So you'd have negative x plus y is equal to x minus five. So I'm gonna plug in an x minus five and then equals negative five. So negative x plus x is zero. And then I have minus five equals negative five. I could add five to both sides of the equation. That would cancel and that would cancel. And I would get zero equals zero. So if you end up with something like that and you're like, what happened? Well, you plugged back into the equation that you just started off with and you can't do that. So if you originally solve this one for y or solve it for x, you've got to plug into the other equation to get started. Once you've gotten a solution for one of the variables, that's when you can plug it into either one. So let's look at the official procedure real quick, and then we're just gonna attack a bunch of problems. So substitution method with two variables. So solve one equation for either variable, doesn't matter which one. Again, look for a variable with a coefficient of one or negative one. Then you wanna substitute for that variable in the other equation. Again, very important, in the other the other equation. Then we're gonna solve for the other unknown, right? So how do we do that? Well, once we substitute it in, we get a value for one of the variables, and then we can plug it back into either of the original equations, and that's how we're gonna solve for the other unknown, and then we just check our result. Remember, the solution has to work in both. All right, so let's take a look at another one. So we have negative three x plus y equals seven. We have negative two x plus two y equals 10. So again, I'm looking for a variable that has a coefficient of one, or negative one if that exists. Sometimes it doesn't, but in this case it does. Right, I have a coefficient of one here. So that means that this equation is really easy to solve for y. I have negative three x plus y equals seven. Single step here, just add three x to both sides of the equation. And I'm gonna get that y is equal to three x plus seven. Now, once I have that, again, I plug back in to the other equation. So I used this equation to start, so that means I'm gonna plug in for y in this equation because I've solved for y. So I'm saying that y is equal to or the same as three x plus seven. So I'm gonna plug this in right here. That way I have a linear equation in one variable and I can get a result for x. So I'd have negative two x plus two times y. Y is this quantity, three x plus seven and this should be equal to 10. Let me just drag this down here. Okay, so we'd have negative two x plus two times three x is six x, and then two times seven is 14, so plus 14, this equals 10. Negative two x plus six x is four x, so I'd have four x, and then plus 14 equals 10. We would subtract 14 away from each side of the equation, that's gone. I'll have four X is equal to 10 minus 14 is negative four. Divide both sides of the equation by four and we're gonna get X is equal to negative one. All right, so I know X equals negative one and now I can take that and I can plug it into either of the original equations. I can plug it in here or here, does not matter. So I'm gonna plug it into the second one. So we have negative two times X is negative one, so times negative one 
plus 2y equals 10. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, so that's positive 2 plus 2y equals 10. Subtract 2 away from each side of the equation. That's gone. I'll have 2y is equal to 10 minus 2 is 8. And then divide both sides of the equation by 2. And of course, y is going to equal 4. So as an ordered pair, this is negative 1 comma 4. And of course, you always want to check your work. So make sure this ordered pair is a solution to this equation and to this equation. Remember, it's got to work in both to be a solution for the system. So we have negative 3 times x, x is negative 1, so times negative 1, plus y, which is 4, equals 7. And you can eyeball that and see it's going to be true. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7, so that's going to check out. For the other one, we have negative 2x, so negative 2 times, again, negative 1, plus 2y, so for y we're plugging in a 4, equals 10. So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, plus 2 times 4 is 8, that should equal 10, and of course it does. So this result, the ordered pair negative 1 comma 4, is in fact the solution to each equation, and so it's a solution for our system. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have 4x minus 5y equals negative 8. We have 3x plus 5y equals negative 6. So again, I want to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Again, doesn't matter which one. I like to look for a variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. In this case, we don't have that. So we might be better off using a different method. Another method we're going to learn in the next lesson is called elimination. It would be perfect here because I have negative 5y and positive 5y. And I know that probably doesn't make sense to you yet, but you'll see in the next lesson. For right now, we're using substitution. And it always works. It's just a little bit more work. So just solve one of these for one of the variables. So let's go ahead and just solve this first one for the variable x. So we have 4x minus 5y equals negative 8. So I would add 5y to both sides of the equation. So that's gone. We'll have 4x is equal to 5y minus 8. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 4. That's going to cancel. I'll have x is equal to 5 fourths y minus 8 over 4 is 2. All right, so now I'm going to plug in 4x in the other equation. Again, it's got to be the other equation at this stage. So here's my x, and I'm saying x is equal to or the same as 5 fourths y minus 2. So I'm just going to plug this in right there. So I'd have 3 times the quantity. Remember, this is a quantity here. 5 fourths y minus 2. Make sure you use parentheses. You don't want a silly mistake to cost you an answer on a test. So then plus 5y equals negative 6. So 3 times 5 fourths would be 15 fourths times y minus 3 times 2, that's 6. Then plus 5y equals negative 6. Let's go ahead and clear that denominator. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 4. So 4 times 15 fourths is obviously 15. Then times y minus 4 times 6, that's 24. Then plus 4 times 5y, that's 20y. And this equals negative 6 times 4, that's negative 24. All right, so 15y plus 20y is going to be 35y then minus 24 equals negative 24. And what I've taught you before is that if you see the same thing on both sides of the equation, you can get rid of it. Because of the addition property of equality, if I add 24 to both sides of the equation, it's just going to go away. Right? It's just going to become 0. So I'll have 35y on this side. And on the right side, I'm just going to have 0. So this equals 0. And obviously, for 35y to equal 0, y has to be 0. Right? I divide both sides by 35, and y equals 0. OK, so I know that y equals 0. Now I just need to find a value for x. And again, I can use either equation and substitute a 0 in for y, solve for x. So let's go ahead and use the second equation. So we'd have 3x plus 5 times 0 equals negative 6. And so 5 times 0 is 0, so that's gone. I'd have 3x is equal to negative 6, divide both sides by 3, and you get x is equal to negative 2. 
So this ordered pair would be negative two comma zero. All right, so again, the last thing we wanna do is just check our work, make sure we got the right answer. So we have four times, for x I'm plugging in a negative two, minus five times zero equals negative eight, and that's true, four times negative two is negative eight. So five times zero is zero, and so we have minus zero there, so it's basically just negative eight is gonna be equal to negative eight, so this one is true. So then the next one we have three x, so three times negative two, plus five y, five times zero, equals negative six. So three times negative two is negative six, then plus five times zero is zero, so plus zero, I can just kinda get rid of that. So negative six equals negative six, so this one works out as well. So negative two comma zero, that ordered pair, is a solution for our system. So all in all, not a very difficult procedure to execute. You just have to remember what to do in what order, right? I mean, you're, you're basically just gonna end up solving a linear equation in one variable to get your value for x and to get your value for y. So nothing that's too difficult. All right, let's talk a little bit about special case scenarios. So you'll recall when we did our lesson on graphing that we looked at two special cases. One special case was that we had parallel lines, right? So we had a, a system that would never have a solution because the two lines would never ever cross. So there would be no ordered pair that would satisfy both. Then you also have a special case scenario where you have the exact same line, right? So one line was manipulated to look like it was different, but it was the same. And so you had an infinite number of solutions. Now, when you have a special case scenario with no solution, you're gonna end up with a nonsensical statement like, I don't know, four equals 12 or zero equals negative 36. The two sides won't be equal, but you'll have an equal sign there. So let me show you with this example. We have negative four X minus five Y equals one. We have 12 X plus 15 Y equals three. So let me solve this first equation for Y. So we have negative four X minus five Y equals one. I'll add four X to both sides of the equation. And I'll have negative five Y is equal to four X plus one. Now I wanna divide both sides of the equation by negative five. And so what I'd have is Y equals four over negative five, that's just negative four fifths, then times X, and then minus, we have one over negative five. So I put minus and then one fifth. So that's solved for Y. And now we can plug in for y in the other equation. So remember, y is equal to or the same as negative four fifths x minus one fifth. So I'm gonna plug in for y here. And again, what I'm plugging in has only an x variable, so I'd have a linear equation in one variable now. So 12x plus 15 times, again, you've gotta use parentheses here because this is a quantity. So negative four x over five, or negative four fifths x if you wanna say it that way, minus one fifth. Okay, and this is gonna be equal to three. So unfortunately, when we go through and solve this, we're gonna get some nonsense. So we'll have 12x plus 15 times negative four fifths. The 15 would cancel with the five and give me three. Three times negative four is negative 12. So I might as well just put minus 12x and then 15 times negative one fifth. The 15 would cancel with the five and give me a three. Three times negative one is negative three. So minus three equals three. So you can see if you combine like terms here, 12 X minus 12 X is zero. So I'd end up with this canceling and me having negative three equals three, which is false. So if you get something like this, don't freak out. You have a system that has no solution. You have no solution. And that's how you can tell. You get a nonsensical statement like that. Negative three equals three, right? That's clearly false. All right, so to kind of prove that this has no solution, I wanna also solve this equation for y and show you that you have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. So we'd have 12x plus 15y equals three. We're gonna subtract 12x away from each side of the equation. We're gonna have 15y is equal to negative 12x plus three. Divide both sides of the equation by 15. And what are we gonna have? This cancels, I'll have y is equal to negative, 12 is divisible by three, and so is 15. So negative four fifths times x plus 
3 fifteenths. Each is divisible by 3, so I'll have 1 fifth. So it's really easy to make a mistake here and think that you have the exact same equation, but you don't. And what's different here is a minus and a plus. So you have y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 1 fifth. So the y-intercept occurs at 0 comma negative 1 fifth. For this one, we have y equals negative 4 fifths x plus. Okay, see how that's different. This is a minus, this is a plus, 1 fifth. So the y-intercept occurs here at 0 comma 1 fifth. So they're very similar, but they're not the same equation. And so this is not a scenario where we have an infinite number of solutions. We don't have a solution at all. So these two equations will never cross on the coordinate plane. If you graph each one, they'll never touch each other. You have two parallel lines. And so again, there's no solution. All right, so let's look at one that's an infinite number of solutions. So some of you will get really good at this really quickly. And you'll be able to spot that one of the equations is just a manipulated version of the other. So in other words, if I look at x plus 6y equals 8, and I multiply both sides of the equation by 2, I would get 2x plus 12y equals 16. So it's the same thing. I just took this equation and multiplied it by 2 to get to this equation. Right? I'd have 2x plus 12y equals 16. So knowing that in advance, I could just put that there's an infinite number of solutions because whatever works as a solution here is also going to work as a solution here. And a linear equation in two variables by itself has an infinite number of solutions. So in this particular case, again, the solution for the system would be an infinite number of solutions. But let's go through and use substitution. I see that I have a coefficient of 1 for my variable x. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for that to start. So I'd have x. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6y away from each side of the equation. So equals negative 6y plus 8. Again, all I did was subtract 6y from here and here. That's why I have a negative 6y on the right. So negative 6y plus 8. Now I'm going to plug this in for x in the other equation. So negative 6y plus 8. Again, that's a quantity, so I've got to use parentheses. So it's 2 times the quantity, negative 6y plus 8, then plus 12y equals 16. So 2 times negative 6y is negative 12y plus 2 times 8, that's 16, plus 12y equals 16. So negative 12y plus 12y, that's going to cancel. And I'm left with 16 equals 16. Or if I wanted to, I could subtract 16 away from each side and get 0 equals 0. It doesn't really matter. You get the same value on each side of the equation. You're left with a true statement. So yeah, this is true. 0 does equal 0, or 16 does equal 16. But it's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for a variable equals some number. So when the variables drop out and you're left with just a true statement, you know that you have a system that has an infinite number of solutions. Right? The equations are what we call dependent. So there's an infinite number of solutions. 